what are the landscaping projects or the lawns that you take care of that come to mind if someone would ask you this question, what's the best work that you've done? Well, these are the types of images for a lawn care and landscaping company that you would want to include in your portfolio or a gallery on your website. When picking properties though, it's important to pick the right properties and to shoot them in the right way. It's Chavit Landscape Leadership, and today I am here with my friend Mike Maville, who does a lot of photography for us, for our clients, and we're gonna be talking a little bit today about picking locations and how you get really, really great shots. So most people don't wanna be common, and when you look at you know, websites throughout the lawn care and landscape industry. I get a chance to look at dozens of them a week. <laughs> um, you, we often go through their portfolios and kind of see, are these guys hacks or they do really good work. And unfortunately, like even when they do really, really good work, sometimes the photography is, well, really bad and um, isn't great. And I know that most people, myself included, I wasn't, you know, big into photography until we started doing a bunch of these shoots. And so I could tell you like a feeling I would get when I'd see a bad picture and the feeling I get when I see a really good picture. And I still am learning what makes those pictures and that's why you're here to help me today. But let's talk first about the locations. The thing that I often see that's really frustrating is a project that was just done. I mean, it's the seed hasn't even sprouted yet. Um, good grief, I've seen pallets of pavers off to the side. <laughs> they didn't even shoot it until they got the stuff off the property. Still lines in the, oh, in the, the grass it's from the uh, yeah, sod it's, put down. It's really terrible. And yeah. you know, these are the images that you're leading with your, to your prospective client that this is the best stuff that we do. Yeah. Um, and so new properties are sometimes not the best to shoot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have to kind of let things settle in a bit. Um, you know, I, I know fresh and new sounds great. Mm. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times you still have a lot of dust on the pavers when yeah. you do installation. You know, sometimes that, you know, um, the chemicals come up through that and, and you give it some time to weather and they, they kind of look a little bit better and maybe you could go back and seal it. Yeah. Um, I know the, the big thing that I often hear from landscape company owners is, well, you know, we, we build it, but we're not maintaining it. So we have no idea what it's going to look like a year from now if we try to go back. Yeah. Um, and that's a challenge. It's, you know, a legitimate concern. But we've had luck with this, you know, shooting, you know, six, eight months out, you know, in some of these projects, right? Yeah, yeah I think you got to give it a little bit of time to breathe, uh, six, eight, maybe even a year. Yeah. And, and if you are concerned about um, you haven't maintained it, um, you know, going back to the homeowner, you know, a few days before the shoot, and maybe it's one of the things that you offer to them to help kind of set their mind at ease on allowing us to photograph it is to say, hey, we'll just make sure everything looks good and if it yeah. doesn't we'll tweak anything and, and kind of make it look brand new again yeah i mean if it's just a small area around the back patio mm -hmm. you could go out there and say listen we will mulch your backyard for you and yeah of course it's an expense but it might be worth it you know if you have a fresh coat of mulch all the leaves are cleaned up out of things the yeah. patio swept off um we've even had some some clients that when they shot um i remember a, a front walkway that we did they actually went out and pressure washed it and sealed it yep the week before you went on a shoot, yeah. just so it looked pristine, because we liked the fact that all the plants were mature and they had grown in over three, four years, but you know there was some moss and different things in the joints. Yeah. Let's talk about a, just a couple of these, these sites and why they photographed so well. Yeah, so when you're picking a location, um, what you've done may look great. Um, maybe sometimes the project wasn't huge though, but maybe the home itself looks beautiful. So, you know, what you're trying to do is every little piece that's put in around a property is there to enhance the overall beauty of right. the location. So sometimes it's about the location. Yeah, like you might have created the best fire pit and patio in the backyard, but the house really isn't that impressive. Yeah, exactly. yeah, it, it, yep. and it's kind of not your ideal customer so that probably might not be the best yep. project to shoot exactly let's talk about a couple of these um, a couple come to mind um, one of the ones in Florida that we shot yep. for ground source um, tell us a little bit about this project and why you feel like this was a really great location yeah so this project was a large beautiful house it had been there for a while and they actually I, I would say that what they did with the property was was a pretty big 
project. Yeah. Uh, it was the whole front yard, uh, yeah. driveway. Yep. All the landscaping around all of that. And one of the things too, I remember of that property is, you know, you're just saying this is there are multiple things to take pictures of. Yeah. And a lot of times when we select, get clients to select these properties, we say, listen, let's get the most for your money. You mm -hmm. know, you got right there, you have some pictures for your landscape lighting marketing. Yep. You got some for pavers because the driveway, you have some for planting. Yep. Um, there's a variety of different things. There was some sod they installed there. You know, multi-purpose shoots, not just one type of feature. So the property that has a bunch of things going on is, yeah. is a good, good choice. Yeah, absolutely. Let's talk a little bit about some of the pool work that we do. Because some of our you know, design build contractors uh, do pool installations or at least do all the surrounding areas around the pools. So this first property was pretty amazing because it was just a great setting. I mean, it had so Beautiful. many things going on with a fireplace and a seating area and a double edge infinity pool. Which yeah, you, that was cool. I've never seen one before. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, it also had a- uh, Built-in lighting, like in the walls light, yeah. and steps. It, colorful lighting that they could change with an app yep. on their phone. Yep. So there was just a lot going on, but you know, it was it was great to be able to photograph at this in the evening and get some you know interesting yeah. different skies and things like that. Yeah, we got different colors based on what they did with the pool with the lights, mm -hmm. but then also as the exposure changed, the light changed outside, we got different colors as well and, yep. and that reminds me too we've done a lot of shoots and we've been blessed with like really good sunrises or yeah. sunsets which I know we can't control that but <laughs> it's really amazing like it reminds me of you know some of these this other pool that that we shot you know where the sun was just going down how quick do you have to be to get that <laughs> um, well you have to plan it out way in advance yeah. um, and, and I have apps that I use nowadays which is great to be able to, to figure out what time specifically right. sunrise or sunset mm -hmm. is going to be um, and usually I have to be on location if it's a sunrise about 45 minutes before that sun rises that's right because I have to have all my equipment out and be ready to go a half hour before because that's usually the best color in the sky is a half hour to mm -hmm. 20 minutes yeah. before the sun actually comes up and 15 to 20 minutes after the sun goes down for the sunset. So that's how you get the best color in the sky. Yeah, you know, it just reminds me why I love working with you because, you know, these are things that a professional thinks about that you might not have ever thought about. And that's all I think. About. Yeah, I mean, this is what he does for a living. Like, just like you could teach him a ton of things about lawns and landscapes he has no clue of, and I do all the time too. But, you know, that's one of the things about working with a professional, and hopefully you're at the point where you're way past the amateur and you're like, yeah, it's worth spending the money for a professional. But even within using professionals, there's, there's grades of uh, you know, people like that um, that are you know, okay, better, and, and best. So I really appreciate working with you. Well, I mean, and part of that is just experience. I've been doing this for a really long time. And you know, some people starting out are good at seeing certain things with photos. Yeah. But they just haven't had the experience to be able to um, know what goes into finding the right light or taking the time to really care about taking that garden hose out of the yeah. back of the photo or you know whatever, whatever it is and, and that's why you know well, my price point is where it's at <laughs> goes along with experience yeah um, but you know it also goes along to getting great images quickly yeah well let's talk a little bit about okay so photography it's you know it's an art you're an artist and, yes. and I've noticed just even you know, being on a dozen different photo shoots, I see things now that I never would have seen before <laughs> and they bug me like crazy. So what are some of the things that when you're looking at photos that maybe somebody else has done that really bug you artistically or how do you make sure you line up a good shot? I know that's a really loaded question. Yeah, no, I mean, I think some of the things that I'm looking for is, is my background uh, before photography, I mean, I've done photography since I was in like middle school, but I actually went to school for graphic design, so I constantly have that that thought in my head of what can this be used for? Is it going to be used on a website? Is it going to be used for a print ad? Or you know, is going on social media? And if this is being used for marketing purposes, could there be a logo or text put on it? And is there space to do that? So That's artistically, true. I have to think about those compositional things in addition to it just actually being composed well to begin with. Yeah. So yeah. I think artistically, those things drive what I do on top of lighting and color and that type of thing. Yep. Well, I appreciate you taking the time and talking a little bit about this. And you know, as you think about putting your best foot forward and showing off your best work in your photography, whether it's on a portfolio on your website or in some sort of print material, it's imperative that you, just like you tell your clients, pay for what you want to get 
Um, and that means sometimes paying a premium, or at least if you're paying a premium, doing some research to find out if the person that you're using can really deliver on that. So hope you've learned a lot today. Hope this inspires you to get even better pictures and land more clients. Thanks a lot. Have a really great day.